playful togetherness, okay? So sometimes people think, well, what does that have to do with me? Or what, how is that affecting me? Well, let me explain how, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so has anyone ever experienced like being around your friends, your beloved, your children, your family, anybody, basically, and you can feel yourself like held back? Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Where you're not really just showing up and just really being who you are and being in that place of happiness and joy and connection and light and, and you know, just sharing you. Can't be authentic. Can't, that's a good way of saying it, just not being able to be authentic. Yeah. yeah. So people, there are actually lots, a lot of humanity. In fact, I would say more than half of humanity never experiences a sense of joy, happiness, of expression of the self, mm -hmm. more than half. I'm serious, okay? Like if you look at even your life, how many times have you truly just been that authentic self, fullest expression? And I'm not talking about that state where people get manic, okay? You know, the manic state where they get overly excited or really happy because something happened and now they're really pumping it and they're really happy. That's not, that's not real, that's artificial. A lot of people do the artificial, which is get a little bit <laughs> yeah, that. You know? Yeah, or needing so some kind of substance. Like, you know, we're all at a party or we're hanging out. Right, right. Or even using, right, like even people. using sub, some kind of substance to feel happier. You know, you actually watch it. I see people like taking a drink or two and all of a sudden now they're all happy. That's not authentic. Mm -hmm. Or doing some kind of drug or even, you know, something that alters who they are. And yeah, great. I mean, even. Um, you know, just even being excited because something new or different is happening, but there's still, it's still what I call like almost like a manic state. They go into a much higher level of feeling rather than just who they are. Okay, here's another piece. The leaning out. Okay, remember, you know, some of you know about leaning out, some of you don't. I'm going to just do a little quick little synopsis of that. Okay, so let's just use it with a beloved. Okay, somebody that you really, really, maybe you meet someone for the first time, or maybe it's not the first time, but maybe you've seen them in a different way, and you start to look at them and you feel more of an excitement or more of a desire. So let's just say you're moving more towards having a connection, more of a relationship, okay? In that, when you start looking at them, maybe they have beautiful eyes, maybe there's something about them that you can feel when you look at them, you go, oh, I just love how they look. I love their eyes, I love their smile, I love their hair, or whatever that is. You with me? Okay. Now, it's different when you stay in your body, stay behind your eyes and feel that. When you do, it feels a little less intense, a little less juicy, a little less like, you know, like that, that, that amped up, that the high that we're looking for, not consciously, but unconsciously, okay? So when we lean out, like if I make you the object of my happiness, <laughs> my joy, okay? That, that's, it's a leaning out. And this is what's happening usually in early, rela early in your relationship, okay? You stop leaning out as the years go by, okay? Which is actually good, it's just that you also block your heart. So. In the leaning out, there's always a sense of excitement. It always feels more exciting. I remember one time I had a couple, this was back in the 90s. Well, I've had many, but I'm just saying, I, they, I remember them because they liked the leaning out, okay? So I showed them and helped them to really feel what that felt like. So I had them just feel in their body, and then when they would both lean out, making it about the other person, like, oh, your eyes, your face, your whatever, whatever, okay? Then both of them would lean out, and then they would meet each other out of the body, so to speak, and then everything could be like exciting and juicy and passionate and alive, and they liked that. When I had them lean back into their bodies and stay in the body, it felt more flat to them it felt, um, it wasn't as a stimulating or as exciting or alive, okay? But that's because of all the blockages in the physical body 
on an emotional level, mental level, spiritual level, where there's blocks. Blocking the heart center, blocking the divine light, blocking the authentic true self. And they prefer to maintain leaning out. This is why I'm remembering them, because everybody else gets it and they're like, they didn't like it. Especially when one would stay in the body and the other one would lean out, then it felt like you were being slimed. It felt like you were being perpetrated. Did people from the outside see them as a perfect couple kind of thing, or no? Not necessarily. Okay. Not necessarily. But, but I would have to tell you that most of humanity, the majority of humanity, leans out and doesn't know they're leaning out. Mm -hmm. It's people like you, okay, that, that can sit and stay in the physical body no matter what, even in the, in the face of intimacy and, and um, you know, sharing the deepest aspects of the self, if we stay behind the eyes and stay inside, then we have to feel what it really feels like inside. <laughs> okay? All right? And, and then what happens is then we, we're faced with ourselves. But when we're leaning out, we're not totally aware and in touch with all the sensations, the feelings, the anxiety, the fear that we're actually, the body's actually doing or feeling because we're out here, okay? So. Okay, I have a question. How do you keep from being slime or feeling slime? Because you can't help people leaning out. You can't stop you can't them. Like, no, is there you can't. <laughs> you're not, no. Hey, I'm slime. Yeah. You're going to feel it. And, and if it's people you know, you can always just say to them, hey, you're, can you feel where you're leaning out? You want something from me or you're just wanting to be closer to me. But can you feel where you're just literally leaning out of your body? When you do that, I feel really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I feel your energy pushing on me and it does feel like you're being slimed. Yeah. Well, to my friends, I could say that. Exactly. Everybody but for else. people, I know, I mean, I had a time, this was at one of our the people, the thing, the, the, the networking group that we're a part of, mm -hmm. okay? I was at a, we were at one of the gathering things and this woman with her husband was there. This man was leaning out so strong, it was like, so, it was like, oh my word. But you know, it's like, they don't know, if I said to him, you're leaning out of your body and it feels really uncomfortable, he wouldn't know what I'm talking about. Right, right. So you know, it's like, there's nothing to do I just backed away until I could feel some space between us and just kind of like looked at him and I think he understood but he didn't really get what was happening. Mm -hmm. You're not going to go around telling people because you'll be doing it with almost everybody. <laughs> You're leaning out, get back in your body, stay behind your eyes, mm -hmm. forget it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the main thing is, especially, it's, more, it's like in your relationships, in your friendships, you know, in your connections with people that you have a closeness with or even your clients or you know, people that you work with. Those are the ones you can talk to and share with them and they're going to get it. Okay? But otherwise, it's like anything, you guys. You can't stop people from doing what they have no awareness of. Right. You're not going to change them because it's an, they are so used to external. Okay? And the external happens immediately upon birth. It actually happens in the womb when you're feeling your mother's emotions, when you're feeling the penetration of energies that are penetrating her energy field, that fetus that's growing is feeling that and it becomes external. Okay, we begin to identify. You're born into the world, everything's external. Isn't it exciting to be touching, smelling, tasting, everything? Everything becomes external. It's part of the setup for the unraveling of you, who you are, all of your past incarnational experiences, okay? But basically, for us, you know, in the, in the topic of playful togetherness, if you've got all this energy in your energy field blocking your heart, it's, you're not going to be comfortable. You're not going to feel safe to let somebody see you or to let somebody in. It just isn't going to happen, okay? So, you can, like I said, you can feel the blocks, you can feel the withholding, you can feel like there's not that authentic feeling. And like I said, it's like more than half of humanity never experiences true connection with the self, never feels true sense of joy, happiness, peace. And they won't because it's not possible with the blockages and the energies that are still in the energy field. Whatever you carry forth in your soul imprint is going to stay with you. It doesn't just go away. 
All right, so basically what we want to do is start clearing out some of the interferences that are in the physical body that are inhibiting and blocking you from just shining your light, from your divine self. You know, and the truth is, is if you're on the planet right now, you still have stuff to unravel. Bottom line. I don't care how evolved you are, how much you know, or how, what you're teaching, or what you're, you know, what you're demonstrating. If you're still alive, other than just a handful, on the planet, you still have unraveling to do. It's just the way it is. Okay? And you know it. That's the thing. Thank goodness you know it. I know it. Okay? I'm acutely aware of anything inside of me that, that I feel inhibited or blocked or I'm not in my full, I'm not just being myself. You know, acutely aware. It's like, boom, in my face. Okay? <laughs> and that's what happens. Okay? You can't be hiding anymore, pretending. It's like, who are you hiding from? Yourself. Okay, so this is going to, this is, this feeling, this blockage is ancient. It actually started at your initial separation, beginning of all of your physical incarnational experiences. So just imagine if you've got a hundred, let's say you've got a thousand lifetimes or even 500 lifetimes, even a hundred lifetimes, which I don't think, I think most everyone's much more further along than that. But it doesn't matter. Each of those lifetimes, you collect more and more and more and more and more evidence in your soul imprint that shows you it's dangerous. If you came in and were eaten alive or something, even if you're like in a little amoeba thing, you know, you're, there's going to be some kind of trauma that stays stuck. But basically, we're just going to use sentient beings, conscious beings, consciousness, aware, okay? And in that initial separation, there's that feeling of separation. There's the awareness that you are separate because now you have an awareness of your own awareness. And that's, that's the bottom line. Once you have awareness of awareness, you are now individualized, feeling as though you are the only one. Of course, everybody feels that. So, <clears throat> We are going to track back and see if we can unravel at that level, but we're also going to be tracking back into lifetimes and start clearing out some of the more traumatic energies where it became really unsafe to be in the world, okay? To be seen, okay? There's all kinds of things. It's trippy. Someone, someone just flashed a lifetime. Um, being really joyful and then, then because of that being shut down. There's people right now, I think many of you have probably experienced that or talked to them, where as a child, they weren't supposed to be happy. They got in trouble for being too happy or too loud or too laughing too much or, you know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. shutting down. But remember, you drew that in, that, that experience, because of the past. Anything of this lifetime is not new. It is not the first time it's happening in this incarnational experience, okay? So, and then what also happens is once you have something that's a theme, like let's say that somebody's, their, their life is about just always feeling suppressed, always feeling sad, never being happy, then they're going to have other energies that are interfering with that. Like there's going to be implants, for real. Everybody has implants. It's kind of a trip. And then there'll also be, of course, always, 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 other people that have passed that are no longer, didn't go into the light, that have the same energy, the same frequency. You're going to pull those in as well. You're going to have a bunch of them. If you've got a bunch of people inside of you that can't be happy, that have all this trauma, a fear of just being seen, then of course, no matter how much clearing you get, if you don't release these, they don't leave. But once they leave, then shift can happen. So we want to be looking at um, all these, all the components. And then of course, too, which I think is really important, people don't really think about this much because most people aren't calling upon the powers of darkness. They're not using hatred or um, the desire to cause harm or using witchcraft, I mean dark witchcraft, uh, voodoo, thing, you know, calling uh, Satan worship, things of that nature. You know, that's more hidden, but it's still happening. But most people, you know, they're really wanting happiness, okay? Most people, no matter who they are, there is a desire for their lives to be better. Even the most unconscious mainstream people, their desire is to be happy, you know, to have, to be able to take care of their lives or family, 
and just to have that sense of peace and happiness. So everyone is seeking that. What people don't realize is in the negativity, what I mean by that is how many times have you ever gotten angry with somebody because they hurt you in some way? And that first initial reaction is wanting to cause harm or, or wanting to get revenge or wanting to be, for somebody to be punished. Whether you're punishing them or not, you know, if somebody, something happens to some member of your family, and if you're the mom or the you know, friend, how many times have you wanted something to be done to the person who you see, seemingly believe caused the harm? What do you think's happening when you have those kinds of desires? That's not of the light. So if it's not of the light, what is it of? It's of negativity, darkness. You are truly actually calling forth powers of darkness to create harm. <clears throat> or to punish someone, or you want retribution, okay? It's a natural human nature, but my point is, if you think you're all this light, which I remember, I remember so many times in Bay Area, Bay Area is like the hub of consciousness, and you have so many people believing that they're so awake. I'm gonna tell you straight up, they're not, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Shall okay. Reading the hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. So in that belief that you are and you're trying to hold a frequency and you're you know, you're trying to demonstrate this and yet behind do closed doors, you know, you've got some really weird kind of perversions or, you know, you're wanting people to be harmed or you want power over, that is not of the light. You are not awake. Okay? So if you are in any way having negative thoughts, negative feelings, desires for others, then you're literally calling in the powers of darkness to assist you in causing something for these, other, for these people. When you do that, you have agreements. So those dark forces are in your world. Not only are they in your world, but they can create webbings around you and they can create chains and ropes and bindings around your physical body, inhibiting you, blocking you from just being who you are, okay? So I can tell you right now, because I'm scanning everybody's energy, everyone's got some kind of dark force stuff twirling around in their energy field, somehow interfering, guaranteed, okay? So what we really want is even with clearings, get this stuff out of the way. And when you do have times where that inkling of feeling of wanting to get back at someone or wanting to harm or any, on any, any level, wishing ill will, you know, just nip it in the bud. Don't even go there. Just wish them light. You know, if you're going to do that, give it over to creation because that's really the only thing that has the power for, for all, you know, for all, all things. So we're going to work with some of that. This will be good because I can see some good things happening in people's bodies that are definitely interfering. Okay, And then, of course, we have um, perpetrator energy in the body. So we want to start moving more of that out. That's an emotional energy of other people. Okay, So people are always you know, in penetrating each other. So when you know that you do that too, it's your feeling, it's your will, it's your desire, okay? Let's just say even in, in work and you've got a, a, a coworker and you're not liking what they're doing or maybe you want them to be doing something different, but you don't say anything, or even if you do say something, that feeling that you want, that desire, if you have that and you kind of push it onto them, you're putting your energy inside their body. It's an emotional energy. And if you don't pull it back out, it doesn't just come back to you, okay? So we have that as well, all right? So now to get the most out of the experience, I want you just to light things up for me. What I mean by that is when you think about that feeling of just playful togetherness, being with your friends, being with your beloved, being with humanity, and you just have that desire to just be that fullest expression, that feeling that has a grab to it, 
or that has like a, a blockage to it or even has anxiety to it. But there's a, there's a, a blockage of some sorts where you can literally feel where you can't just push through it and just be who you are. Okay, there's energy blocks. What I want you to do is when you feel those blocks, it isn't just feeling the block itself. It's lighting up how it makes you feel. Okay? So when you think about that feeling or that desire to just have that playfulness, that divine essence of who you are, how does it make you feel? Mm -hmm.